I love Apple and I love their computers. They're, they do some good things, but there are some problems with their Macs. Like everything, that should be fixed because, I mean, well, let's get into it. So the first thing, point is that Macs definitely need lower price tags. Now, the reason, main reason why PCs are the biggest computers, are the, are the best selling computers in the world is because, well, Typically they have lower prices for a similar value that the average person needs. Macs don't normally have that and they should change that at least with their lower end MacBooks. For example, the MacBook Air, that starts at $1,000. Now let me break it down to you what the Mac, now keep in mind that it starts at $900 in their education store and about 20% of this goes toward just being a Mac. So let me just do a little math on my Apple Watch here. So let's say it's $900 the education price. So I'm gonna multiply it times. So that's $180 right there. So 900 minus 180 is $720. Now that's a Still a pretty unreasonable price for a for a laptop. Now, typically, with when it comes to both my Microsoft's Google Surface Laptop Go starts at five hundred fifty dollars. So that's not bad. And then we get to the Google Pixelbook Go, which starts at six hundred fifty dollars. That ain't bad either, but. $900 or 1000 depending on whether you get from the education store or not. I don't know. That's a pretty big price tag. The MacBook Air is designed to be a budget machine, but also the most portable. And I did hear rumors that Apple is making a MacBook SE, but in reality, yeah, Apple could easily lower the price tag of their MacBook Air to 550 to 500 to $550. Next up I want to address, and it, this is the same scenario with the M1 MacBook Pro, just the basic one. That starts at $1,300 with, for, for a laptop with a 720p webcam. Hmm, I don't know. And the M1, keep in mind, is the equivalent of the i7, but generally for more pro laptops, you're going to be looking at a general experience of so maybe the pro mac macbook could start maybe 650 dollars that'll be a reasonable price point but a more realistic price point so the macbook pro starts at 13 dollars times 20 percent is 260. so 1300 minus 260 is 1040 bucks now that's a lot more achievable. Now that's an okay price. So that would be the more realistic value of it. As 20% of the Mac is obvious cost is just be for it being a Mac. And then and then they should Apple should also have a basic 60 inch Mac Pro for people like my mother who don't exactly need a need a whole big fancy laptop but just want a basic but if just for basic people who don't want a or basic u laptop user I should say not basic people but that if, that for people who just can't stand 13 inch screens for I don't know an extra screen an extra screen real estate would probably add on maybe about 50 so that'll bring it to $700. Now, isn't that a little more reasonable? Hmm. Oh yeah, let's talk about the new MacBook Pros, the M1, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. So for starters, could Apple have seriously not come up with a better name? Like, I don't know, maybe M2, M2 and M2 Plus or just something like that. Did they have to use the names M1 Pro and M1 Max? That's just not that great. And also, how are you gonna say 
Okay, so here's multiple M1 Max Max. Yeah. That's going to get pretty confusing. Oh, yeah, and we should also talk about the new MacBook Pro's notch. Now, I've been wanting Apple ever since, Sam ever since Samsung put their hole punch displays on on the Samsung Galaxy S10. I've always, I've wanted Apple year after year to, year to get rid of the notch and they never have on their phones and they never have. And now they brought it to her MacBook for the webcam purposes. Now webcam is finally better quality, although it could be better. I mean, it could be maybe four or five K. So big plus, j j big plus on that. But I don't know, the notch is a little yesterday. Now, I don't think Apple really understands. I am generally just not a fan of notches. For I think they look ugly on iPhones, and I still think they look very ugly on Macs. And with Apple rumoring to make an M2 MacBook Air with a notch with white bezels, oh, imagine how ugly that will look. The notch. And I know, and the random alpha did say on his iPhone XS review video that will not just cut into the content. Well, he won't a hole punch display, excuse me, cut into content worse than a notch. Well, true, but they could easily just have it a content air like it's being for an, like it, it's just below the hole punch, and then that would make a little more sense. And I think that invisible webcams are also starting to become a thing, so you do know. Or I could easily have a flip up camera too, to where you can just flip the camera up when you need it. That would also be useful. So did Apple really have to go the notch route? I don't think so. Oh yeah, and the touch bar. Now, wait a minute, I know what you guys might be thinking. Didn't Apple remove the touch bar for the new MacBook Pros? Yes, they did, but people did, not a lot of people like, touch, like the touch bar, but I personally did since I thought it made the MacBook Pros cool and unique. But I do, but it was app, but it was mainly Apple who killed their own touch bar. So, Apple, so Apple only made the touch bar available on the MacBook Pros. Now you see what the problem is. If it were available, not a lot of developers would want to optimize their apps and software for the touch bar if it was only for the Pros. Why not bring it to the Airs? Or even on the desktop keyboards, huh? I don't know on that one, but Apple did did kind of screw that up, or they did screw it up, I should say. And then we get to, but one thing that I think Apple should not have done is Apple should have also made the touch bar above the top row of keys instead instead of the way they actually designed it, because it looks because that would make it far more functional, and it would also make. That would make the computer more functional. And they should not, Apple should have not, def, definitely have not put the escape key right by, right by on the left of the MacBook Pro touch bars on the layer of MacBook Pros with touch bars. Just saying. Oh yeah, and let's talk about the new MacBook Pro's keyboard. So I have larger function keys now, which is good, but this uses a similar design to the Apple to the iPad keyboard right here. So I'll show you what the iPad smart, Apple's iPad smart keyboard looks like right here. And I think it looks good on the iPad, but keep in mind that it's blended with the silver housing. And I do not think that it looks good. Oh yeah, and speaking of, and let's talk, stop talking about hardware for a second. Let's talk about the software. 
In case you're not aware of App Mac OS Big Sur, Apple decided to redesign the whole UI of Mac OS to where everything's rounded, even the icons. And I do think that is very ugly. And I want them to go back. Mac should, besides the iMac and, I, and the MacBook Air, which is rumored to come in colors, I think that they should also come in more colors just because we all like colors. But lastly, but lastly, the new MacBook Pro Pros brought back the HDMI. Now this isn't necessarily Apple's fault, but more or less the consumer's, the customer's fault. I am sorry there, but here's my explanation. The latest generation MacBook Pros brought back the HDMI port and the SD card slot, which were removed back in 2016. Now, why is that a pro problem? It might be good on a first no note, right? Well, it isn't because people of the consumers didn't necessarily give USB-C a chance because it is the superior port. You can export video from it, they have all sorts of accessories for it, you can do data transfer and everything from it, you can connect stuff with USB-C. I think you can even export audio from USB-C, you can charge in and out with USB-C. It is really the superior port. So, I do sort of blame the consumer. I do sort of blame the consumers for that. Although I am glad that MagSafe returned though. So, on a final note, this is the iTunes fanboy. All of my social media will be linked down below in the description. Along with the I Random Alpha's iPhone XS review. And, we, and please subscribe to my channel where I can reach 300 by Thanksgiving of this year. This video is currently airing in 2021 in case you're watching this a few years from now. And uh, on a final note, have a great day and peace out.